Hello, everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode on Show Me the Truth. Today, we want to go ahead and get into what is happening in New York State. Has anybody ever heard of the Rule 2.13? Man, how would you like for the police to come up in your home and take you out of your home? Whether you got toxic shock syndrome, whether you got Lyme disease, whether you got, you know, whatever it is, right? C-19, whatever it is. How would you like to someone to just come up in there, no warrant, no nothing, and take you out of your home to go into some quarantine camps or whatever they have for you? How would you like that? I want you to check this video out. Watch it with me and let's go through what is wrong with this and then we're going to have a remedy new york fema camps new york state is still fighting for the right to set up quarantine camps today the battle entered the next phase when the court heard oral arguments in the case ntd's arian pastar spoke with the lead attorney and a state senator involved in the case quarantine camps in the state of new york governor kathy hochel and attorney general leticia james want to implement rule 2.13 it would give the state's Department of Health the power to forcibly isolate individuals suspected of carrying a transmittable disease. This is truly about being able to control citizens. For New York, reason. Governor Hochul's plans for quarantine camps may be in the works again. You An appeals that? court just dismissed a lawsuit from lawmakers and citizen groups. Their attorney, Bobby Ann Cox, disagrees with the decision. We spoke earlier today. Bobby Ann Cox, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for joining us. To begin with, can you please explain the judge's ruling in this case and your initial response here? Yes, well, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, so what happened was the Fourth Department Appellate Division here in New York State um, ruled that my plaintiffs, Senator George Borrello, Assemblyman Chris Taig, Congressman Mike Lawler, and a citizens group called Uniting New York State, um, didn't have standing to bring the lawsuit last year, uh, which, if, if you recall, we actually won the lawsuit last year at the trial court level uh, when the court ruled in our favor and said that this regulation that Governor Hochul and her Department of Health made um, were, it was an unconstitutional regulation on multiple levels. Um, so now now this appellate court, uh, which, you know, of course, the governor and the attorney general appealed to this court, uh, they tried to overturn our decision. And yeah, the court came down and said, well, you know what, we're not even going to talk about the merits here, uh, whether or not this regulation was unconstitutional or not. Uh, we're just going to say, hey, you know what, we don't think you had the right to bring the lawsuit in the first place last year. And what's uh, your assessment of that decision? What's your assessment of the reasoning here? Yeah, it's pretty surprising, I have to say. Um, you know, the trial court judge last year didn't even discuss standing. Uh, you know, it was an argument that was brought up by the, the attorney general last year at the trial court, um, but it was so obvious that we have standing that the trial court judge didn't even discuss it in his decision. Um, so it was very surprising, and, and I don't agree. My plaintiffs and I do not agree with this ruling. We do not believe that sitting New York State legislators and the, the people of New York State, um, you know, in a citizens group, don't have standing. It doesn't make sense. Pay it. <laughs> Did you see how she said New York State legislators? And I am so glad she said that because I get to bring up the doctrine of the lesser magistrates. Do you know what the doctrine of lesser magistrates is? Uh, it was actually expounded upon by John Calvin, and it's actually expounded upon by others. But we want to remember what that doctrine of lesser magistrates is. Listen, there was a Roman official. Watch this. It was back in the day when Rome was in their heyday. But it was a Roman official who said, I am not going to allow Roman soldiers to come and pillage these Jewish settlers over here because it's wrong. It is wrong what they're doing. And don't you know, because that person who was not the emperor, right? He was lower than the emperor, but he still had authority. He still had power. He said, no, I'm not allowing the emperor, even though the emperor said to destroy these people, I'm going to come in between them and I'm going to help them. And did you know that he stood up against all those Roman soldiers that were coming to destroy those Jewish settlers? And that 
my friends, is the doctrine of the lesser magistrates. That's what the police need to do in New York. That's what the state legislators need to do in the state of New York. That's what they need to do. That's what the sheriffs need to do in the state of New York. Why? In the counties. Because you have a constitutional right to do that. When you swore that oath, that bound you to the oath, that bound you to the Constitution, okay? And any official, any especially government official who swears that oath is bound to the Constitution. So it doesn't matter what executive order, what authority, what anything, right? Any edict, any mandate, if it's not according to the Constitution, guess what? You do not have to follow it. Now, I'm not saying to be rebellious. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is to be like that Roman official that knew what was right, that knew what was less than right, and he said, listen, I'm going to go for what's right. These people have families. These people have businesses. I'm going to protect the people that I swore to protect, and that is exactly what they did. So it doesn't matter what ruling right, a judge does, come on, the president does, or even the prime minister, whatever, whoever it is, you do not have to follow it, sheriffs. You don't have to follow it. Police, share this all over the world. You don't have to follow it, New York state legislators. You don't have to follow unconstitutional, illegal edicts from above. Because really... Sometimes we see that they're actually from below, like this rule 2.13. That's the good news. That's the remedy. That's the right for remedy. Just say no. You know, back in the day, Nancy Reagan had a slogan, and that slogan was, just say no. Before, she was talking about drugs, right? You remember, dare to keep a kid off drugs? I believe it was drug abuse resistance environment or whatever it was. I remember that. Some of you remember it. You got to just say no to tyranny. You got to just say no whenever an edict comes down and someone, some tyrant, some Hitler, some Stalin, some Mao, uh, some some person wants to uh, 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 put upon you some tyranny, put upon you something that you know you shouldn't do because it's illegal, because it's not right, not according to our constitution. And you can say no. It doesn't matter if it's a UN resolution that says it. The UN doesn't govern America. They want to, okay? And some of these billionaires are helping them. But you, American citizen, you, person that loves America, you can stop them by not only sharing this information with your family and friends, share it with your sheriff. Please, please, please look up what I'm saying about nullification. Look up what I'm saying about the doctrine of lesser magistrates. You and your family will thank you. God bless you and you take care and we will see you in another video.